it's hard to find an EV that's properly capable of tarmac. For the time being, Subaru Solterra is probably as close as you're going to get to a full battery powered model delivering that kind of capability to any great extent. Developed with Toyota, it's the brand's first purpose built EV and includes quite a lot of what Subaru's learned in the last few decades about off road technology. What will the Subaru of the future be like? Well, it certainly can't be anything like the Subarus of the present. And in this age of electrification must be far removed from the Subarus of the past. So the brand has brought us this, the all electric Solterra. The name derived from a combination of the Latin words for sun and earth. This car comes with a pledge from its brand that existing Subaru customers can feel it is truly a Subaru in wild environments like this. Well, that could be a stretch because, as you might notice if you've been following the EV market lately, this car shares almost everything with its close cousin, the Toyota BZ4X. To be fair, the Solterra isn't merely a rebadged design. The company has played at least an equal part in the development both of the car itself and the EV platform it sits on, called ETNGA by Toyota and Subaru eGlobal platform by Subaru. It's all part of a move by the mark towards electrification, though its targets are decidedly modest. By 2030, when many manufacturers will have switched to an all EV range, Subaru hopes that 40% of its model lineup will have full battery power, a change which starts right here. The Solterra might be the first serious production battery electric car the brand has made, but it's not about to compromise on any of the mark's core values. That's why, unlike with Toyota, you can't get a front-driven version. And also, unlike the Toyota, the all-wheel drive system is a permanent rather than a part-time one. But is all that enough to make this a true Subaru? You'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. Subaru and Toyota both had plenty of opportunity to inspect rival segment EVs before finalising this one, so you'd expect it to maybe bring something new to this sector. The multifunction digital instrument display screen positioned in place by these grey plastic slats certainly looks different. Push the start button and it springs to life with a green ready symbol and the drive selector with its blue illuminated options is unusual too. But will this be the real Subaru driving experience the brand's promising? Let's find out. We'll talk a lot in this review about how similar this Solterra is to its Toyota BZ4X cousin, but when it comes to drivetrain engineering, there are some fundamental differences between the two cars. First, unlike with the BZ4X, you can't have a front-driven Solterra. Secondly, more significantly, when it comes to the all-wheel drive setup, thanks to some software changes, this Subaru has a proper permanent four-wheel drive arrangement, rather than Toyota's less effective on-demand system that only cuts in when a lack of traction requires it. There are other key differences too. In the Toyota, you can't variably control brake regeneration. There's just a single dash button that turns it up to the max. In this Solterra, you get that, but also these useful steering wheel regeneration paddles so that you can vary the amount that the car slows when you come off throttle depending on the way you want to drive. Pull the left hand paddle to heighten the regen while the right hand paddle softens it. Subaru calls it S-Pedal Drive. The Solterra drive experience is subtly different in other ways too. There's an extra power drive mode to add to the two usual ones, normal and eco, and Subaru has chosen a slightly firmer suspension tune than you'll find in the BZ4X. Plus, 
little more steering weight too, though you experience it through much the same diminutive steering wheel designed by Toyota to accommodate the smaller joystick style tiller for the steer by wire system that this Subaru won't get. This little wheel is a bit like the sort of thing you get with Peugeot's controversial eye cockpit arrangement. With Peugeot's, that gives a sporty feel, which works on small, light, compact hatches, but feels rather at odds with the weighty reality of a two-ton full electric SUV like this one. The steering rack is one of those continuously variable ones which respond sharply at low speeds, but more leisurely at higher ones. Through the corners there's not much feedback, but response to wheel turns feels satisfyingly precise and direct, even when you're pushing on. It's at this point that cars like this used to lurch about, quite a few of them still do, but this one stays composed with body roll well managed. It's certainly a sportier feeling than is served up by most class rivals. Part of that's down to careful positioning of the substantial 71.4 kilowatt hour battery, which provides for a combined cycle drive range figure of up to 289 miles and sits low down as an integral structural part of the all new Subaru e global platform architecture. A platform that will undergird a whole series of new EVs from the Fuji Heavy Industries brand over the next few years. The taut rigidity of this chassis helps explain that cornering prowess we just mentioned, further aided by clever front and rear e-axle motors that save weight by each integrating the transaxle, the electric motor and the inverter into a single unit. As we said earlier, the Solterra only comes in all-wheel drive form, an active torque split setup that's symmetrical in proper Subaru style and is based around an 80 kilowatt motor on the front axle with another identically powerful motor at the rear. There's no reason why the same 4x4 setup couldn't also work with a gutsier 150 kilowatt motor at the front as it does with the Lexus RZ and as may a future high performance sports tune variant of this Solterra. But the standard all-wheel drive version of this Subaru is quite eager enough for most, with a 215 bhp system output, 336 newton meters of torque, and a 62 mile an hour from rest sprint time of 6.9 seconds, en route to the usual modest EV top speed of 100 miles an hour. Toyota handed over development of this design's all-wheel drive system almost entirely to Subaru, and the result is the inclusion of more 4x4 prowess in this car than you'll find in any other comparable EV. To deliver that, Subaru developed a couple of off-piste X-mode drive settings for the car, accessed via this centre console button, and delivering the choice of either a snow or dirt option, or a gnarlier deep snow or mud setting. The system includes grip control, and adds a downhill assist control feature to ease you down slippery slopes. The key change here though, and another fundamental that separates this Solterra from the BZ4X, is the most un-EV-like level of lofty ride height rated up at 210mm, which enables this car to venture places that other electric vehicles simply wouldn't be able to go, and wade through up to 500mm of water. The off-road stats are slightly better than they would be in a comparable BZ4X2. The approach angle rated at 17.7 .7 degrees, the departure angle at 25.4 and the ramp angle at 18.2 degrees. All the angles calculated to protect both body and battery. As a result of all this, if you were to fit a less eco-orientated set of tyres to your Solterra than we have here, though this Dunlop Sportmax rubber is grippier than that fitted to the equivalent Toyota, there really is no reason why it couldn't go almost anywhere you could travel in a Forester or an Outback, which means it would go a lot further in the mud than most pretentious lifestyle four-wheel drive SUVs. As a result, successful farmers wanting to make the switch to EV but still needing a reliable village commuting tool for all weathers might well be tempted to consider one of these, provided they don't need to do much towing. In a major disappointment, this Subaru fronts up with one of the lowest braked towing weights in the class, just 750 kilos. That's in a segment where it's not unusual to find EVs of a similar size 
being able to tow up to 1,600 kilograms, or even in the case of the pure electric Volvo XC40 recharge, up to 1,800 kilograms. To quote Subaru's own strapline, in this area, the Solterra really isn't better where it matters, and if it's to properly meet the expectations of its customers, the company needs to sort this issue out, and soon. Off-road and towing issues aside, like all its segment rivals, the Solterra's primary remit remains prioritised not for the Serengeti, but for the urban jungle, a stop-start environment in which, as with all EVs, you can usefully boost the quoted combined cycle range figures for this car. Earlier, we quoted that to you at 289 miles, a stat that needs to be qualified by pointing out that it only applies to the entry-level limited spec version, which runs on 18-inch wheels. This plusher touring trimmed model has larger 20-inch rims, which make a surprisingly big hole in that figure, dropping it to 257 miles. To get anywhere near either of those readings, you'll need to make regular use not only of the Eco Drive mode and the steering wheel regen paddles, but also the dash-mounted regeneration boost button we referenced earlier. When that's activated, your off-throttle progress noticeably slows, apparently by up to 0.15g, though not to the extent of nearly bringing the car to a halt, as do the so-called one-pedal setups championed by some obvious rivals. You might reasonably think that this car could do with a bit of that sort of accented battery replenishment tech, given that the exemplary driving range mileage standard we hope this Subaru might set hasn't really materialised. To give you some idea of the current class level it must aspire to, we'll tell you that a dual motor Tesla Model 3, which by the way can tow up to 1.6 tonnes, would take you a substantial 85 miles further than this Subaru between charges. Still, some other compensatory attributes are available here, including two that Tesla, for one, could learn from. Excellent refinement and ride quality that, even in this firmed-up form, deals confidently with poor surfaces without the need for the suspension to be expensively embellished with a kind of adaptive damping system that Subaru's chosen not to offer. Even with big 20-inch wheels fitted, you don't really need that kind of setup here. Borrowing on development partner Toyota's long experience with hybrids, the brands also expertly manage the difficult task of mixing friction and electrical regeneration braking. The pedal works smoothly all the way to a standstill without the jerkiness you'll find with many competitors. And thanks to the Solterra's comprehensive Safety Sense portfolio, no other rival has a more complete package of proactive camera-driven drive assist and safety kit. And in summary, well, powering a car with electricity ought to open up a whole range of new possibilities, and in the Solterra, by and large, it does. If you've an active lifestyle or live in an area frequently beset by challenging conditions, it does more than you might ever expect an EV to be able to do. Subarus needed some help to produce an end result this good, but by and large, the brand has effectively used the borrowed Toyota expertise and added a few tricks of its own. The result is a car that, though likely to be forgotten on most EV shopping lists, well deserves a place on yours. Subaru clearly doesn't see why it should have to substantially change the look of this Solterra just to make it significantly different to its Toyota close cousin. Subaru did, after all, have just as much input into styling this rather futuristic shape with its artful slashes and creases. But it was clear when the wraps first came off this model at the 2021 LA Motor Show that the brand wanted it to look a touch more SUV. As you may already have noticed, the main way the designers have gone about doing this is by altering the treatment of the front grille and headlights in a way that references Subaru's existing SUV lineup, hence the more overt hexagonal grille blanking plate and the addition of these beady little round lower fog lights. The LED headlamps also lose the body-coloured upper eyelid panels that characterise them on the Toyota. 
All small changes, certainly, but enough to make the hammerhead shape of this car appearing in your rear view mirror look quite different. It's harder to spot this Solterra's differences from the side. Even the wheels look much the same as those on a BZ4X. 18-inch rims fitted to the base limited version with 20 inches fitted to this top touring variant. As with that Toyota, these alloys sit surrounded by elaborately black clad arches, the front arches cladding extending curiously into the headlamp unit in an attempt to emphasise the crossover vibe aided by this model's relatively lofty 210mm ground clearance figure. There are slender front pillars, narrow black roof rails, and the stuff you can't see is important too, like the full underbody cover and the thicker side window glass to reduce intrusive noise. From this perspective, brand loyalists might also notice that the 4.69 metre long silhouette is a fraction bigger than Subaru's conventional Forester SUV, as is the 1,860 millimetre width. Students of the industry might also be interested to note that all of the multitudes of EVs now on the market, this is the only one actually badged EV. Make of that what you will. Another EV badge decorates the rear, where Subaru subtly changed the design of the LED tail lamps and, unlike Toyota, resisted the temptation to link them with a full-width reflective red strip. This split roof spoiler is interesting, and its aerodynamic properties are supposed to make unnecessary a rear wiper, so Subaru hasn't fitted one. As usual, with manufacturers making this claim on a hatchback model, starting off on an autumn morning with leaves and water droplets on the tailgate glass is a forgotten scenario. It's pretty revolutionary beneath the skin too, this being the first outing for the brand's new Subaru e-global platform, which of course is the same as the e-TNGA electric vehicle underpinnings used in the BZ4X. The chassis fixed elements are the position of the front and rear motors, the underbonnet layout, the driver's position relative to the front wheels and the width of the battery unit. The changeable elements that will allow Subaru to use this platform for EVs in a variety of sizes include the wheelbase, the number of battery cells and the front and rear overhangs. Right, time to take a look inside. Well, Subaru hasn't wasted its time making pointless changes to differentiate this car's interior, so alterations over the BZ4X are restricted to the badge on the steering wheel that gains brake regeneration paddle shifters, plus there's the provision as standard of this digital rear view mirror, which displays camera images of what's behind. As we said when we tried that Toyota, we're slightly unconvinced that this is as luxurious a cabin as ought to grace a £50,000 upper mid-sized EV. Yes, it's built as flawlessly as Subarus always are, but there's an appliance-like feel to the fixtures and fittings that some competitors avoid, and the somewhat sombre vibe isn't helped by the fact that the only upholstery choice you're offered is black, either fabric or, as in this case, synthetic leather, depending on your trim choice. A few plusher elements do feature this woven textile mid-fascia panel and in vogue piano black trimming on the upper centre console and around the door window switches but given the pricing being asked here none of it's quite enough even if you splash out on top level spec. Charismatic furnishing isn't everything of course and there's no doubt that this is the most sophisticated front of cabin design the company has ever offered and in some ways the most unusual the absence of a glove box is supposed to create an area feeling which unfortunately you don't really notice because you're hemmed in by this high set centre console below which room created by the absence of a transmission tunnel frees up open, lower, shallow storage space you'll hardly ever use. Given that the electric motor, the power control unit and the EV transmission are all intelligently packaged beneath the bonnet, our preference would have been to locate the climate system packaging there as well, enabling the removal of this centre console furniture entirely, which would have created the opportunity for a lovely flat floor between the front seats. That really would have made the cabin feel spacious and airy. 
The other thing you'll notice pretty soon after getting comfortable is the unusual wheel and instrument binnacle arrangement that sees you staring through the spokes of a smaller than usual steering wheel at a Solterra branded 7 inch digital combi meter instrument screen supported by these unusual grey slatted struts. This setup works well enough but we can't see that it offers any particular advantages over a more conventional binnacle. And there's the disadvantage that the screen isn't large enough to bring GPS mapping into your line of vision, nor can it be combined with a head-up display, though its high placement means you'd hardly need that anyway. At least the instrument screen's more informative than the little 5.3-inch display you're stuck with on rival EVs from the Volkswagen Group, with a main dial area that uses a grey power meter and a blue battery charge gauge to frame inner readouts for miles an hour, drive mode, gear selection, speed sign and drive assist info. Range mileage is given too, but a battery percentage readout is lacking, something that apparently is going to be corrected by an over-the-air update. A top left steering wheel button allows you to move this central dial to the right and free up more left-hand screen space for the selectable data display that can appear to the left of it. With that, more steering wheel buttons allow you to select between various menus for eco functions, drive assist features, audio settings, drive elements and safety systems. Anything else you'll need to know will of course be found on this central infotainment monitor, a 12.3 inch multifunction color touchscreen which is Subaru branded at startup and which in size and clarity is a vast step forward from anything the company's previously offered, though it doesn't seem to have any sort of home screen or split display properties, nor is it exactly over endowed with informative EV features. Those you do get are found in the vehicle section, one of six selectable via this narrow right hand options menu. The others are nav, audio, phone, web, browser and settings. Over the air updates, cloud based navigation and a decently intuitive voice activation system also feature, as do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems, though annoyingly the latter needs a wired connection. We'd hope to find physical buttons for switching between the standard interface and that used with smartphone mirroring, but unfortunately they're lacking here. And also on the subject of buttons, you do get them provided for the climate system. Thankfully, ventilation control functionality hasn't been inhaled by this huge monitor. It's operated instead here by smart, hidden until needed, touch sensitive switches on a black panel just below. Enough on screens, what else? Well, the roof line might be lower than a Forester, but you do sit higher than you would in one of those perched on top of all those battery cells, which delivers far more of a proper SUV feel than most crossovers in this class provide. That helps with all round visibility, which is fine unless you find yourself needing rear three quarter vision, in which case the chunky rear pillars will force you to make use of the standard reversing camera and the all round parking sensors. Some have criticized the ergonomics, complaining that unless you set the steering wheel very low, it partially blocks your view of the instrument screen. We haven't found this to be a problem, but you should test the layout yourself in the showroom to make sure you're happy with it. This curious gear selector takes some acclimatization, but the seats are comfortable with plenty of the kind of side bolstering that's so often missing from cars in this segment. Plus they come with power adjustment, electric lumbar support and heating and they also line up neatly with the steering wheel and pedals, which isn't always a given. We mentioned the less than opulent materials vibe earlier. If you shelled out top money for one of these and ignored a premium brand rival, you won't appreciate the insubstantial door pulls, the cheap grainy plastic moulding around the cup holders, or the way the grey supporting struts for the instrument screen can flex about, as does the infotainment screen mounting but there are some things you'll really like too. For instance, the see-through lattice lid on this phone charging compartment below the gear selector, enabling you to keep an eye on handset alerts that might appear whilst it's being powered up either from the charging mat or the USB-A port contained within. Actually, come to think of it, that might prove 
rather distracting. Anyway, that compartment's part of a 20-litre cabin stowage space total, the lion's share of which is provided by the lower part of the centre console that we referenced earlier. The space, Subaru says, is big enough to take a pair of shoes or a handbag. Plus, it also has a 12-volt or 120-watt socket, a USB-C port and a pen tray. Further back between the seats, there's a large stowage box with a rather cheap feeling lift out liner and a sliding top that can be pushed forward over the twin cup holders and pen tray just ahead. We mentioned the lack of a glove box earlier. Well, less unusually, a sunglasses compartment has been forgotten. There are no ticket clips on the sun visors and the compartmentalized door pockets look rather small, though it's claimed they can each take two large drink bottles. Right, enough on the front of cabin experience. Let's take a look in the back. Now this car's Subaru e-global platform has provided for a huge wheelbase increase over the sort of thing Subaru customers have got used to in either a Forester or an Outback. But all EVs in this class claim to be spacious in the rear. So let's see how this one stacks up. Well, it's certainly spacious in terms of legroom. You'll find it to be vast if you come to this car from a combustion-powered saloon or SUV of this size. Even a six-foot, two-inch passenger would comfortably be able to sit behind a front occupant of the same lofty height. Headroom isn't quite so noteworthy, so particularly lanky folk might have to take advantage of the backrest recline adjustment feature. More significant, though, is an issue that affects quite a few EVs of this kind, namely that the high floor level necessitated by the bulky lower battery pack means that the underside of your thighs could be better supported, though it's something that you'll only notice really keenly on longer trips. As you'd expect with an EV, the centre tunnel is virtually non-existent, making the carriage of a third centre-seated adult fairly straightforward if necessary, though they won't be especially comfortable leaning back on a seat panel incorporating this pull-out armrest, which incorporates a narrow cubby as well as the expected twin cup holders. The seat base can't slide, though that's usual in this segment, more disappointing is the lack of individual overhead reading lights, nor does Subaru provide for an extra climate zone back here, the sort of thing you get for half the price on a humble Volkswagen Golf. Still, there are twin central vents with a couple of USB-C ports just above, plus you get seat back pockets, coat hooks in the grab handles, and decently sized compartmentalized door bins. Does that long wheelbase translate into a vast boot capacity? Well, not really. The tailgate's powered, and once it rises, a 452-litre capacity is revealed, though it falls to 441 in this top touring version, thanks to the addition of the subwoofer needed for the variant's upgraded Harman Kardon sound system. Either way, those figures are class competitive, but way behind the 490 litres of a Kia EV6 or the enormous 585-litre capacity of a Skoda Enyaq IV. If you want a perspective on the effect of having to package in all those battery cells, we'll tell you that an ordinary Subaru Forester, which is 50 millimetres shorter, offers a 509 litre trunk. With a Subaru Outback, it's 561 litres. At least the space you do get here is very usable, accessed via a notably low loading lip with deep recesses either side which explains why the eight carry-on suitcases that could fit in here shade the seven case total boasted by the apparently larger trunk of that rival EV6. The Enyaq swallows nine, by the way. Here, though, there's 10 litres of space beneath the adjustable height load floor, enough for charging leads and for the retractable tonneau cover, though not for a space saver spare wheel, as is depressingly usual with EVs. You're left with a fiddly tyre repair kit. There's a dim light on the right and four tie-downs feature, though they're all at the front of the load area. That seat back reclining function means that you've the option of making the backrests a little more upright when you're cramming suitcases in. Three 82-litre cases would fit if you did that, or if you prefer, a couple of mountain bikes. 
But on the debit side, there's no ski hatch, nor does the backrest get a convenient 40-20-40 centre split. So if you rear passengers, long items will have to go up on the roof. Subaru's um, forgotten to install cargo sidewall catches too, so you have to stretch the ones on the seat shoulders if you need to flatten the rear bench. Once you've done that, you'll find that the space opened up isn't quite flat, but it should be quite sufficient for the needs of most owners. At the time of this test in early 2023, Subaru was quoting us UK retail prices based on a Solterra with the initial 7 kilowatt onboard charger, around £50,000 for the base limited model and around £53,000 for the plusher touring variant we're trying here. Those figures will rise as soon as Solterra's bound for our market get fitted with the more powerful 11 kilowatt onboard charger that Subaru wants to fit going forward. Expect that to command an increment of around £400. In comparison, a Toyota BZ4X with a 7 kilowatt onboard charger cost from around £45,700 at the time of our test, but that's with front wheel drive and a stripped out pure base level of trim, neither of which Subaru will offer here. A comparable all-wheel drive BZ4X with a 7 kilowatt onboard charger and mid-range motion trim, directly comparable to a base limited spec Solterra, cost just over £52,000 at the time of this test, so a £2,000 price premium over the Subaru. This Solterra's £50,000 price starting point clearly wasn't chosen by accident. It's also the price starting point for twin motor versions of a host of segment rivals. As we filmed, a base all-wheel drive Volkswagen ID4 was priced from around £48,000, while base twin motor versions of cars like the Tesla Model 3, the Škoda Enyaq IV, the Volvo XC40 Recharge Pure Electric, the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ionic 5, the BMW iX1 and the Nissan Ariya started at just over the £50,000 mark. This Solterra Touring model, same £53,000 spend, would alternatively get you dual motor versions of the Polestar 2, the Mercedes EQA, the Tesla Model Y or the Volvo C40. But you'd need about £56,000 for an Audi Q450 e-tron Quattro, around £58,000 for the cheapest all-wheel drive Genesis GV60, and around 65,000 for the cheapest extended range all wheel drive version of Ford's Mustang Mach E. By which point, you'd be getting into the kind of price territory occupied by cars like the Jaguar I Pace, the Mercedes EQC, and the BMW iX. If having considered all of that, you conclude that it is a Solterra that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Subaru's been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. As we said earlier, the limited grade model is the entry point to the lineup, with features including 18 inch alloy wheels, keyless entry, a reversing camera, auto LED headlamps, LED tail lamps, power folding mirrors windscreen wiper de-icers and a Thatcham Category 1 alarm. Plus, there's also a heat pump that preserves driving range in cold temperatures. That latter feature, a costly extra on many rivals. In addition, you can also tick off rear privacy glass, a powered tailgate, auto wipers, all-round parking sensors and an intriguingly shaped rear spoiler. The rear sensors work with an auto brake parking support brake function for vehicles and objects you might otherwise inadvertently manoeuvre into. The cabin at limited level has black fabric upholstery and heated front seats, the driver's chair with four-way lumbar support and there's also a heated steering wheel. Through it you view a seven inch digital combi meter instrument screen and there's a dual zone climate control system with remote operation function that lets owners warm up or cool down their car ahead of making a journey. Infotainment's taken care of by a 12.3 inch multifunction colour touchscreen, which comes with a voice assistant, plus over the air updates and embedded cloud based navigation. It's also used for the standard 360 degree panoramic view monitor, 
as well as for the wireless Apple CarPlay and the wired Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems. Whatever spec you opt for, useful connected services can be accessed via the provided Subaru Care app. Amongst other things, this allows you to preset the climate system before you reach the car, so the cabin will be perfectly warm or cool at the beginning of your journey, including demisting the heated steering wheel and the seats. And you won't have to expend battery energy on excessive fan use. You can also use the app for remote charging and to pre-plan journeys based around the location of charging stations. The app can remotely allow you to check whether your Solterra's doors are locked and the windows closed, and it can re-secure the car if necessary. If you've lost the vehicle in a busy car park, the app will allow you to activate its hazard warning lights for 30 seconds. You can also share the car's locations with friends via various messaging platforms. Stretch up to this top touring level of spec and you gain larger 20-inch alloy wheels and a fixed panoramic roof with an electric sun blind. Inside, with touring trim, you're treated to synthetic leather seat upholstery, an eight-speaker Harman Kardon audio system with a subwoofer, a wireless phone charging mat, powered front seats, the driver's one with memory settings, plus door mirrors with memory settings and reverse gear tilting. As a point of reference, if you're making spec comparisons with this Toyota Subaru design, a mid-range BZ4X all-wheel drive motion spec model, costing the same as a Solterra Touring, lacks quite a lot over its close cousin, giving you smaller wheels, a feebler stereo, no glass roof, park cloth upholstery and no heated steering wheel. True, Toyota does provide you with the useful auto parking system that Subaru doesn't offer, but Solterra counters back with various things you can't have on any BZ4X. A digital rear view mirror, brake regeneration paddles on the steering wheel and an extra power driving mode. What about options? Well, there aren't many. All Solterras can be ordered with some kind of tow bar onto which an optional rear bicycle holder can be mounted. For the boots, you can add a rear bumper protection boot flap, a cargo tray and a rear seat back protector, plus wheel splash guards and branded door sill plates are also available. Bear in mind that you'll probably be paying your Subaru dealership more for your choice of paint colour. Crystal White Pearl is the only standard shade, otherwise it's £550 more for the various metallic finishes. We've got precious metal here. Choose Harbour Mist Grey and there's the further option of a contrasting black roof. On to safety. Now, as you'd expect, the Subaru e-global platform gives this car fundamentally very strong standards of crash protection as evidenced by the maximum five-star rating this car received in the 2022 Euro NCAP safety tests. The rear framework includes a double ring structure and a rear pillar support structure, providing rigidity to help withstand impact forces from multiple directions. And though the integrated front pillar section is 15% thinner than the sort of thing you'd find in other vehicles of comparable weight, it too is engineered to withstand forces from multi-directional impacts. Plus, there are specific measures to protect the battery unit in the event of a front, rear or side impact. In addition, both versions of this car get all the expected passive safety features too, with twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a front centre airbag to stop front seat occupants injuring each other and rear side bags as well. There's also an e-call system that will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location should any of the bags ever inflate in an accident. You can also tick off ISOFIX child seat anchors, a tyre pressure monitoring system and an emergency brake light signal that activates in panic stops. Plus, there's hill start assist control and driver monitoring system which constantly monitors your driving reactions for signs of drowsiness. In addition, there are all the usual features for braking, traction and stability control interlinked by a vehicle dynamics 
integrated management system. Hopefully, all of that leaves you feeling a little more confident about this car's safety status. So we can go on now and detail the camera safety kit fitted across the range. And there's quite a lot of it, thanks to the provision of the Subaru Safety Sense package. As you'd expect, an autonomous braking system is one of them. The car's PCS, or pre-collision system, able to detect pedestrians in the vehicle's path in day and nighttime driving and bicycle riders during daylight. The system also provides additional safeguards when making a left or right turn at a road junction, detecting oncoming traffic or pedestrians crossing the road into which the vehicle is turning. Visual and audible alerts are sounded. If the driver doesn't react, automatic braking will be initiated. The PCS system also has an emergency steering assist function. If that determines that a collision is likely and that there's sufficient room in the vehicle's lane to avoid an impact, it will provide extra steering assistance while maintaining vehicle stability and preventing lane departure. It will also help guard against the risk of an impact if the driver puts excessive pressure on the accelerator when driving at low speeds. The system then automatically reducing engine output or lightly applying the brakes to suppress the acceleration. Next up with the Safety Sense package is Subaru's DRCC, or Dynamic Radar Cruise Control System, which has an all-speed tracking function and will automatically calculate if speed needs to be reduced when driving through a bend. Speed suppression will operate from the moment the steering wheel begins to turn, continuing until the angle returns to the straight ahead. The DRCC setup works in conjunction with two other safety sense features, LDA or Lane Departure Alert and LTA or Lane Tracing Assist, both there to help keep your Solterra centred in its traffic lane. If the car deviates from its lane without the turn indicators being used, the LDA or LTA system will sound a warning, display an alert and trigger steering wheel vibration. Steering assistance will then be applied, if required, to help return the vehicle to its correct path. The LTA setup is also able to detect if the driver may have suffered an emergency, with an emergency driving stop feature that determines if there is continuous non-operation of driving functions. For example, if the driver's hands are not on the wheel after a medical emergency. It will issue visual and audible warnings then. If there is no response from the driver, it will gently bring the car to a halt and activate the hazard warning lights and horn to alert other road users. Other welcome safety sense features include RSA or road sign assist, which keeps the driver alert to principal road sign commands and warnings, presenting them as images on the instrument screen. The system can also work with the DRCC setup to automatically keep the car within the speed limits enforced during the course of a journey. So if you press the right buttons to activate this feature, you should never get caught by a speeding camera ever again, in theory anyway. There's also a low speed acceleration suppression system aimed at avoiding unintended heavy throttle use when maneuvering. Automatic high beam, which dips your headlights automatically for you at night is included too. And there's a proactive driving assist system that scans the road ahead to calculate collision risks and operates the brakes and steering at an early stage to help prevent an accident. This can be, for instance, a person or cyclist close to the edge of the road or about to cross or perhaps a wayward vehicle up ahead. Thanks to the comprehensive Safety Sense portfolio, your Soltero will also come with a blind spot monitor, which will alert you if you're just about to pull out dangerously in front of another vehicle. The same camera is used for a safe exit assist system that will warn occupants about to open the doors in the face of oncoming traffic, pedestrians or cyclists. And for a rear cross-traffic alert system, which alerts you to oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. Earlier, we also mentioned that this car has a useful parking support brake system, which tells you if you're about to hit an object or vehicle at low speeds, say a low wall or a parked car. 
If the sonar determines that the risk of collision is extremely high, then the brakes are automatically applied to help avoid the collision or reduce the impact. It's all very reassuring. What we'd hoped for from Subaru here in terms of drive efficiency was a real step forward in battery and electrical architecture technology, or at least an EV with an 800 volt electric system that would enable it to use the coming generation of ultra fast public chargers. The sort of thing that's already been available for several years from Hyundai Motor Group brands and top lottery level Porsche and Audi EVs. Disappointingly, the Fuji Heavy Industries brand hasn't stretched to that here. There's a conventional 400 volt setup instead. And from July 2023 production, an 11 kilowatt three phase onboard charger replacing the 7 kilowatt item fitted to this early production test car. The Solterra will accept fast charging at up to 150 kilowatts, which will replenish the 71.4 kilowatt hour usable capacity battery to 80% in 20 minutes from a 150 kilowatt DC charger. It'd be an hour with a 50 kilowatt DC charger. The garage wall box with a 230 volt, 32 amp, 11 kilowatt supply will take about nine and a half hours for a full charge. It'd be 12 hours and 45 minutes with a seven kilowatt wall box. So nothing to write home about with those stats or in terms of the WLTP rated mileage range figures we touched upon in our driving section. We'll repeat those for you here. For the base limited model with its 18 inch wheels, the WLTP range is quoted at 289 miles, three miles further than a comparable Toyota BZ4X all wheel drive motion model. For this plusher touring trimmed version with larger 20 inch rims, the figure's 257 miles two miles less than a comparable BZ4X all-wheel drive Vision variant. With the Solterra, those official figures are based around a claimed 3.9 mile per kilowatt hour combined energy consumption return. With Toyota's all-wheel drive BZ4X, it's quoted at four miles per kilowatt hour. The difference presumably being this Subaru's use of a permanent version of the four-wheel drive system we've been getting about 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour consumption on this test, which works out to a 243 mile real world range. Again, some class perspectives needed as we filmed in segment only dual motor versions of the Genesis GV60, the Nissan Ariya and the Mercedes EQA did worse than Subaru's official stats. All the other contenders are either at the 300 mile range point or more likely considerably over it. Dual motor versions of the Polestar 2 and Tesla Model S manage 368 miles and 374 miles respectively. So Subaru, like its Toyota development partner, has got a way to go here to match the prevailing class standard. There are also positives here though. The brand fits a standard, the heat pump that many rivals sell as a pricey extra. This feature there to preserve battery range in cold weather. And talking of the battery, the one in this car is cleverer than most. Longevity is ensured by careful battery management, which can be damaged by continued rapid charging. But in this Subaru's case, should that happen, the system steps down the energy intake to protect the cells. The Solterra's battery also comes with a long eight year warranty, which guarantees that the unit will maintain at least 70% of its original capacity by the end of that period, all subject as you'd expect to an annual health check at an official retailer. We don't understand though, why Subaru can't offer the better 10 year, 620,000 mile battery cover package you get on the equivalent BZ4X. Subaru also declines to offer Toyota's warranty extension package, which on a BZ4X means that if you get your car annually serviced at a Toyota retailer, you can extend the warranty up to as long as 10 years and or 100,000 miles. Like all Subarus, the Solterra is merely covered by the usual three year, 60,000 mile deal. There's also a three year recovery and assistance package for the UK and Europe. For home battery replenishment, you can of course set your charging schedule in car on the vehicle part of the center screen, a section which additionally provides real time consumption data. There's a trip info screen that shows current info as you drive, average speed, range, trip duration, and an ongoing mile per kilowatt hour graph. 
and there's a history section that shows your latest mile per kilowatt hour figure, plus your previous best and a historical mile per kilowatt hour graph. What else? Well, you'll need to know about insurance, which as ever with an EV is likely to be expensive because brokers remain terrified of heavy accident costs that might follow severe damage to the battery powertrain. Unfortunately, with this Subaru, for reasons best known to the insurance industry, the ratings are considerably higher than with the equivalent Toyota Group 46E for the Solterra in limited form and 47E for this touring version. For an equivalent all-wheel drive BZ4X, it's Group 38. Servicing is required every year or 12,000 miles, which is curious because it's every year or 10,000 miles with the BZ4X. As for depreciation, Subaru quotes a 58% figure based on three years and 36,000 miles with this touring version, which is very class competitive. Like all EVs in its class, this Subaru is rated at 2% for benefiting kind taxation, is fully road tax exempt in the UK for the time being, and will escape the London congestion charge until at least 2025. The last few years have been truly dismal for Subaru. That's what you get for missing market trends. First, the move towards SUVs, and now the trend for electric vehicles. The Solterra, though, does at least belatedly introduce the company into the EV market and with a very competitive product. If you already own a Subaru Forester or an Outback, perhaps you live in a rural area or on a farm, this is probably your future car. With its X mode and grip control systems, it's probably the best four-wheel drive electric vehicle currently out there. And with a set of chunky tyres, there won't be many places you currently take your Outback or Forester that you couldn't also take a Solterra. Friends who think they know the industry will tell you that it's merely a rebadged Toyota BZ4X. But if you've watched this review, you'll now know better. Appearances suggest that this is indeed just a bit of badge engineering. But in reality, on this test, as we've tried this car on terrain on which EVs would typically flounder, its differences become more obvious. Primarily the higher ride height and the extra grip from Subaru's permanent version of the all-wheel drive system. On tarmac, things are a little different in a Solterra too, thanks to the provided brake regeneration paddles and the additional power drive mode. Not everything's ideal, of course. Given the priorities of likely Subaru customers, we're shocked that this car's braked towing limit has been set so low. And as we said when we tested the Toyota version of this design, we're surprised the brand didn't use this model's lengthy gestation period to engineer in the 800 volt electrical infrastructure that would have opened up access to the coming new generation of ultra fast public chargers. But we don't doubt that we'll see that with future Subaru EVs. For the time being though, this one is pretty close to what the company needs in this segment decently arresting to look at, just about competitively priced, and unlike most previous models from the brand, properly provided for in terms of connectivity, which ought to broaden this car's appeal beyond Subaru loyalists. But we've said that before about new models from the brand, then seen the sales figures trickle in. Will this car be different? It needs to be. We think you should give it a chance.